Hi, my name is Casper René Johansen and I'm your YouTube philosopher. Let me ask you a question. Just uh, try to close your eyes and imagine a, an ancient Greek philosopher. Not any one specific, just an image in your head of an ancient Greek philosopher. Now let me ask you another question. Did you think of a man? And another question, did you think of an elderly man with a long beard? Did you also picture that ancient philosopher in a toga? Well, interestingly enough, the Greek philosophers didn't wear togas. The Romans wore togas. And why didn't you picture a female philosopher. I'm going to present to you in this video 10 female philosophers from the antiquity that has, is kind of uh, lost to us. But they are there. There are female philosophers. Let me also first stipulate that I, of course, don't dislike uh, male uh, Greek philosophers. Don't be silly. Some of my great uh, favorite uh, philosophers is back in the ancient Greece. I love Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, uh, and all the pre-Socratic like Heraclitus, uh, uh, and so forth. Of course, I love all of them. But I'm a philosophical uh, historian that's interesting in all history, not a, a constructed history or a selected history. The history is mostly written by the victors or by a, a certain uh, uh, zeitgeist of the time, a certain uh, uh, view on, on things, so we always get this uh, selected, uh, constructed history anyways. We also know that history is complex, it's uh, nuanced, and it's not uh, black and white, so it's not all male. Of course there were female philosophers. The interesting thing, a lot of times these female philosophers, they are just names. They come up as names and gender, and that's it. And that's the interesting thing. Why are they just names? This is because uh, the Greek society is very male-oriented and male-chauvinistic. They were. They believed that the place for the, for the, for the female was uh, at home, in the home. And the greatest contribution to the world a woman can give is to bear children. That's it. So a lot of times these female philosophers, they become in history wives, concubines, lovers, courtesans, or even sometimes they become mothers of uh, uh, great philosophers. So every time we have a female philosopher, they are connected to a certain male philosophers. That's uh, interesting. Weren't they that influential then that they were just uh, uh, a side note, a footnote to those uh, great male philosophers? Or is it like the old saying that be behind every great man there is also a great woman? Because they did sort their influence on the male philosophers. That's not lost to history from us. Now the first female philosophers that has been recorded is a woman named Fiano, Fiano. and uh, she belongs among the pre-Socratic philosophers. That means some of the earliest philosophers before Socrates. That's why they're called pre-Socratic philosophers. And even the male pre-Socratic philosophers, we don't know much about. Uh, they're also kind of lost 
uh, they all a lot of what we know about these pre-Socratic uh, philosophers is uh, quotations from later philosophers who, who tries to quote them in their book because uh, all the pre-Socratic books are mostly just lost in history. We have Fiano, who is the wife of uh, Pythagoras, and uh, Pythagoras, uh, he, uh, he, uh, he, his, uh, he had a cult or a sect uh, who was very much into everything is numbers and everything is mathematics. So it's among these uh, Pythagoreans that we find Fiano as a wife or maybe just a lover of uh, Pythagoras. Uh, Pythagoras, sorry, Pythagoras. So this is interesting. We have only a, a quotation from her, who, which is, was on uh, piety. And that's also the interesting thing about these female philosophers. They are mostly uh, come across as a character who is uh, virtuous and pious. We couldn't have female philosophers that weren't pious or virtuous. So that's also interesting. It uh, uh, has been a way to preserve the, the ideal uh, virtuous, uh, good wife, uh, good mother, and so forth, by calling a female a philosopher. It's also an interesting thing here. But Fiano is the first, and that's a uh, very, very long time ago, maybe about 500, uh, uh, four, four or 500 uh, BC, that we have Fiano, the first female philosopher, the wife or lover of uh, Pythagoras. Number two on this list is uh, Fuentes. And Fuentes, she was also a Pythagorean uh, within that sect or cult around uh, Pythagoras. Uh, supposedly there's a lot of uh, women in this cult, but they're not all names to us. But we have two, the wife of Pythagoras, and we also have uh, this uh, Fuentes. So, who we also have uh, it recorded uh, that she, she wrote a text about the moderation of uh, uh, women. So, here's another uh, of these uh, uh, names of female philosophers that's, well, there's not much we know about her other than she was a Pythagorean. Peritione was an interesting female philosopher indeed, because she's not just anybody. She was the moth mother of Plato. So, this is interesting. The mother of Plato. So that's, uh, other than the female philosophers could be wife uh, courtesans of uh, these ancient Greek philosophers, they could also be their mother. Again, emphasis on giving birth and in this case giving birth to the world of the great philosopher Plato so but she must have sorted her influence on her her child think about it yourself if you're a, a male and watching this video think of your mother she must have have been a big influence on you as well and my mother was and still is so I'm guessing it's the same with you. So Plato's mother is recorded as a, a, a contributor to philosophy herself. And uh, Plato, later on in his academy, his, uh, which is the first academy in the world, uh, uh, a higher learning place uh, from Plato in his academy, they had women. They had women at this academy. And in his uh, utopian society, uh, a woman can also be a philosopher, a leader of this uh, utopian society in his uh, utopian political philosophy. So this is also interesting. It's also interesting about, again, these uh, uh, female philosophers as mothers. We have Socrates, and Socrates' mother was a midwife. So she wasn't a philosopher, but... Socrates views himself as a midwife in a philosophical way, him trying to give birth to uh, philosophical ideas within the person he's talking to. So he's, uh, he's uh, doing the midwife's job 
although as a philosopher. So that's uh, interesting. Also with Socrates, that his mother is also a big influence on uh, Socrates. Arete, and that's interesting, uh, this is also a known uh, Greek philosophical term or word for virtue. So <laughs> here we have a, if a woman called uh, virtue, so to speak. She's the daughter of a famous philosopher and she's the mother of a famous philosopher. And they are both called the same thing, uh, <laughs> her father and her son, Aristippus. And Aristippus was the father who, uh, who, uh, who uh, started this uh, Cyrenaic uh, school. It's a kind of uh, an hedonistic philosophical school, the Cyrenaic uh, school. And uh, it was taken over by Arete. And she was the head of the school from that time on. And she gave birth to Aristippus the Younger, who, who then again took over the school uh, later on. And, and he's the kind of uh, the most famous of this uh, Cyrenaic school that was the, the Younger uh, uh, Aristippus. But his mother was head of the school before him. So she's very influential, uh, this philosopher. But again, her writings lost through history. Number five on the list is the great Aspasia. She might be one of the most uh, known from, from this list. Her name is more known in general history than uh, the others. Uh, Aspasia, she was a lover, a courtesan, a friend of the famous uh, orator and politician in antiquity, Pericles. Uh, uh, Pericles, he is uh, one of the most uh, known uh, political figures in the antiquity and, and one of the, the forefathers of uh, ancient Greek society and foundation and democracy and uh, uh, so on. Pericles, and she's associated with him as friend, lover, courtesan, but not just that, she was uh, an intellectual, a philosopher in his, her own rights. Menexe Nus. Uh, that's a, a dialogue from Plato with, uh, against, uh, with Socrates, who's always the hero in uh, Plato's dialogues. And, uh, and Socrates he attributes uh, Aspasia as the one who he has uh, learned uh, the art of rhetoric. From so we have speculation from uh, Plato's uh, 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 the, the ones who study uh, Plato's philosophy that this dialogue maybe should not be called Menexenus but should be called uh, Aspasia because she's so much uh, in this uh, uh, dialogue. Is uh, the dialogue written in a way to uh, to uh, tease Pericles? Uh, for his uh, dependence, de de uh, uh, dependence on, on, on female uh, advisor. So it could be ironic, this uh, Menexenus uh, dialogue, uh, th that bringing uh, Apatia to the forefront. And also Socrates, kind of ironic when he says she learns the art of uh, rhetoric. So it's also a kind of way to make Aspasia as one of these uh, sophists who is known through Plato as a, a philosophical enemy of uh, Socrates and also Plato making Aspasia uh, a, an orator, a, a, a sophist in a way. Number six on the list is uh, Diotima, Diotima. The interesting thing I would like to say about Diotima is uh, she's also cited in uh, the works of Plato where we have uh, the, uh, Socrates uh, uh, as a, the hero of these dialogues. And, uh, and she comes forth in the Symposium uh, uh, dialogue. And she is the one that, that uh, Socrates have learned the true meaning of love from. And Diotima was supposed to be maybe a, a, a priestess. Uh, 
uh, and, and priestess were uh, held in high regard in ancient uh, Greek society and and sometimes these priestess were also known for their mental abilities. They, they were intellectuals. The interesting thing with Diotima is we not know that if, if she's just a, a fictional construction because she's not cited uh, elsewhere and it's not really known elsewhere. So, so it could be a fictional construction from Plato. But, but anyways, when you read the symp Symposium and if it's true that Socrates had his, uh, his uh, true idea of love from a priestess, a female priestess uh, philosopher, Diotima, that's special. He cite her in, in highest regard. I think he also mentions in the dialogue that she was one of the most uh, uh, clever and uh, wise uh, person he has ever met. That was Diotima. That's what Socrates says in Timostoclea, I think it's pronounced. Uh, and not much is known from, from about her, other that she was supposedly uh, is a priestess who has been uh, who has uh, had an influence on uh, Pythagoras. We mentioned Pythagoras before uh, that he had a, a, a wife, uh, Fiano, who's uh, a known female philosopher. But to me, Stoclea should be the one who has had a certain influence on this uh, uh, Pythagoras as a priestess. So she might even be the first uh, female philosopher ever if uh, Fiano comes later by being lover or wife of uh, Pythagoras. But she's shrouded in mystery, we don't know anything about it. She's just uh, cited as the priestess who, who had some influence on uh, Pythagoras. Number eight on this list is uh, Leontion. Leontion. And uh, she uh, is recorded as a uh, lover or student of the great Epicurus. So again we, we have this Epicurus. Uh, again we have this uh, attribution of the female philosopher as lover or student of a, another great male philosopher at his school. But again Epicurus is uh, one who, uh, who not just had uh, 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 a male uh, philosophers in his group uh, as his peers. He also had uh, Leontium who was uh, cited as one of his uh, students or lover of Epicurus. I prefer watching her as one of his uh, students and, uh, and fellow intellectual friend or peer in her own rights. Number nine on this list is Hipparchia and Hipparchia was uh, very special because she's actually one of the most uh, famous of these uh, uh, cynic philosophers in antiquity uh, and one of the the few uh, really known uh, cynics that was actually Hipparchia but again she's attributed to as a wife or a companion of a famous a cynic philosopher, uh, Crates. And uh, Crates, he, uh, he, he was one of those cynics who, who kind of lived like the most famous of all cynics, uh, Diogenes. Diogenes who lived like a dog and, and lived in a, a barrel or, or tub in ancient Greece. And Crates, he's also attributed to being a uh, a uh, a teacher of a Zeno, the C, the 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 Zeno who uh, who uh, is the first Stoic. So that's kind of a big place uh, Hipparchia has. She she uh, becomes his wife. Usually these uh, cynics they wouldn't marry. They were against uh, marriage. But Hipparchia became special for Crates that he married her and she lived uh, uh, 
with him on the streets as his uh, companion and she supposedly has uh, written text uh, about philosophy. So she has a special place in the history of philosophy. Number 10 and final female philosopher of the antiquity is Lastenia. And Lastenia was a Platonian. That means she was at Plato's school, uh, the first ac academy in the world. She was uh, mentioned. Again, this is one of these uh, female philosophers that's just names to us. But Plato kind of practiced what he uh, preached and lived up to his uh, word that he would uh, he regarded that uh, women could learn philosophy and he had female students at his school and uh, and one of these names of these female students is Lastenia who is uh, number 10 on our list here. Now we have come to the conclusion of this uh, video on ancient female philosophers in the antiquity but I left out one of the most famous uh, female philosophers in the antiquity but she's much later on she's not within a the Greek uh, society as so she's uh, much later uh, 500 uh, AD approximately and she's uh, part of the Hellenistic uh, world and is a Roman philosopher, but it's Hypatia, and she has a movie starring uh, Rachel Weisz. So she is a, a, a really known female philosopher to, to us, and she was uh, apparently a Platonic uh, philosopher, which uh, <laughs> means she was into Plato's philosophy and was teachings uh, uh, Plato's uh, philosophy, but she was also supposedly to be uh, a great mathematician. So she uh, she taught, and that is to ma males, she taught males uh, the art of uh, mathematics and philosophy. But she also lived uh, among the early uh, uh, rising Christ Christian society, and she was uh, killed by Christian for being a pagan philosopher. So we also have a female uh, mother uh, antiquity. She's that's always mentioned Hypatia. But again her writings are lost to us. We don't know much about her philosophy other than she's kind of recorded again. She's attributed to another great philosopher which is Plato because she couldn't be a good philosopher in her, her own rights so she's called a Platonian, but she might have not been a Platonian. She might have elements of Plato's philosopher in her teaching, but she was probably a philosopher in her own rights, and she pissed up, pissed off uh, the, the Christians at the time uh, in some way that she was uh, killed by Christians. So maybe Hypatia was killed for being a female a smart person who was a philosopher, a wise person in her own right, might have been. So this concludes my video, which doesn't conclude anything. And I'm not against uh, all those great uh, male philosophers out there. I like them, but I also like female philosophers, all the female philosophers that has uh, been, because I think every aspect. Every philosopher in history is important, not just men. So this concludes my video and I hopefully see you in my next video. Bye.